Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Today is February 11th. It's uh, 1.45 ish Pacific time. Market's been closed for 40 minutes. And uh, this is your weekly take on the market. I will be your host. No surprise. My name is Scott St. Clair. I'm the manager of the premium product group here at Investors Business Daily. Here is the disclaimer. Please take in a moment to read this. If I pull up a stock, it's not a buy, sell, hold recommendation. We are not licensed at Investors Business Daily. Nobody is licensed. We will uh, talk about the markets, the industry groups, uh, some stocks that are on my radar, both good and bad. And then we will um, do the quote of the week. So um, there's been a lot of talk of the Fed, of course. Uh, the market is you know, worried about what the Fed's going to do. I think it's a given they're going to hike in March. Uh, I don't know if it's a given it'll be 50 basis points, but uh, I think the market is definitely pricing in the fact that the Fed is going to hike. There's a lot of talk that the Fed's behind the curve. You know, if you've heard that term, what does that mean? It just means that uh, they, they have a lot of work to do as far as raising rates. Uh, here is a chart that um, I saw where Bank of America sees seven rate hikes this year, BNP six, it's Deutsche Bank five, Goldman five. Uh, I don't know, it's really hard to know what the market would do um, You know, with the news. It's like having the news is, is probably detrimental. Like if I knew for sure what the Fed was gonna do, uh, it, pro it might mess me up as far as you know trading it because you never know how the market's gonna react to it. But probabilities are, high that the market will go down and probably go down a lot if they hike six, seven times. I know a guy on a podcast said that the Fed funds futures were pricing in eight rate hikes this year. I, I just thought if they did eight rate hikes, eight right rate hikes in one year, I don't know. I think the NASDAQ would be down a lot. I don't know for sure, but that would be my experience. Uh, here is um, interesting. Uh, tweet from uh, whale wisdom they track the holdings of hedge funds and in this case it this is the swiss national bank uh, now the swiss national bank's been buying equities for a long long time i think they might have started after the great financial crisis uh, but uh, you know six percent of their portfolio is in apple five and a half in microsoft amazon you can see above that these are some that they reduce paypal facebook moderna so they own a lot of stocks and it, when it, the reason I bring this up is like when Facebook got hit, I just thought, you know, when Bill talks about overowned, there just isn't any more overowned than when the central banks of the world own stocks. I, unless some aliens come down with a bag of cash that's uh, larger than the central banks, there is no uh, buyer larger than them, right? The buyer of last resort is the, the, the Fed or the central banks. So these stocks are overowned and they're waterlogged. And when they announce bad earnings, or you know, I have to even admit, I'm not even certain if Facebook's earnings were bad, but maybe it was the guidance, or you know, yeah, that doesn't let me pull up the chart. Yeah, minus five percent is pretty bad. Anyways, there's just no buyers here, you know, when that happens. You know, if you've already, if you're Fidelity or you're the Swiss National Bank or you're XYZ hedge fund and you already have 5% of Facebook, and I'm going to keep calling it Facebook. I know they changed their name, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and it's 300 one day and then it's 250, 240, 230 in the after hours. There's just no buyers. There's nobody to take that stock off your hands. So even a little bit of incremental pressure to sell by all of these. Um, entities, it, it creates, you know, this huge gap, incredible gap down. I think Facebook was the greatest um, market cap loss in stock market history. And then the next day, Amazon was the greatest gain in stock market history, something like that. So you have a lot of pockets of illiquidity. They are pretty scary. I, somebody was saying that, you know, I couldn't believe that Facebook was down 43%. Uh, when I heard that and I thought, no way, somebody's misspoke. I knew it was down 20% on the earnings. So I just thought maybe it was down 25 or 30%, but you know, it's over 40%. Uh, but 
that's the term that Bill uses, over-owned. And there's no perfect number, unfortunately, 5,000 funds, 6,000 funds. You know, it depends a lot on the size of the company, um, things like that. But uh, these stocks are over-owned. And they have been for a while, though. So it's not a very timely indicator. But when they pull a trap door, uh, they become, you know, you create all this uh, supply. And uh, that's why PayPal and Facebook and Square, they, they can't come back, at least in the short term here. Uh, there's just no buyers at these levels. They're all, they all own it already. So they need to, to that's what creates the top in the stock. And um, Twilio had a, you know, what a lot of people do, deemed a very good report, tried to gap, gap up and just can't hold it. Uh, um, so market's got issues for sure. Uh, if you're in the right stuff though, you could be doing okay. If not, if not uh, flourishing, especially compared to the NASDAQ. So energy, uh, things like that are, are holding up. It's not easy. But uh, th that's where all the leadership is, which is why it's so important to look at the industry groups, uh, because things change in the market. Cycles change. Shipping stocks. Charles Harris was on um, uh, IBD Live today. You know, Starbulk. Does that you know what's what's wrong with uh, Starbulk? You know, all time highs. This has been a well. I take that back. It might not be all time highs, but um, look at Zim. This has been a great stock as well so there are areas to go to um i paused got off tangent a little bit let's go back to the indexes you undercut the low on the follow through day today now that doesn't negate the rally from a textbook standpoint that you know from the original textbook how to make money in stocks to negate the follow through you need to undercut the low of the of day one so we haven't done that yet but um chris gessel and that team has has um studied the undercut of the follow through day and it's a you know a pretty good precursor that the uh, the low will get undercut it's not perfect but the, the probabilities of of lower prices have just kind of been increasing day by day here uh and um i think i don't know what ibd will do i'm glad i'm not on that team as far as uh, the big picture I, i'm gonna presume they're gonna go to uptrend under pressure for sure uh, that's that would be my assumption. Uh, the S and P holding up a little bit better, right? You can see it just undercut the 200-day today, whereas the Nasdaq wasn't even close on the rally. So the divergence is is super clear. If you want to be invested, you, you can't be in growth stocks. In, in the Nasdaq, I, I don't know. I I don't think it has any exposure to energy, uh, um, and so. That's why it, it, it can't get out of its own way, where the S&P uh, does. Uh, emerging markets, how are they doing? Nothing there. You know, you're not getting killed, but you're not making any progress either. And then the Russell, not as bad, but it never had as much ump up either. So the indexes are at best lukewarm at best i'm i'm definitely not a fan of the indexes uh i own energy i own uh some miners and then i'm actually short some of these uh types of high growth stocks um and uh i just think that's the what the cycle we're in i don't know how long it's gonna last but that's to me the the, the cycle is out of uh, growth and stuff and into um, industrials, metals, energy, et cetera. How long is it going to last? I don't know. Um, let's go to uh, the industry groups. That'll be the next uh, thing we'll talk about. I don't think there's been much change in there. Oil and gas, Canadian, number one. Energy, coal is two. Oil and gas, international, three. Oil and gas, US, four. I think oil, I think oil was up like three and change today to $93. Oil and gas drilling, oil and gas integrated. You get the idea. Transportation ship, oil and gas field services. Chemicals, ag. I think NTR made a new high recently. Yeah, they were very close. CF has been a stock that I was in. 
I got to stock. The, the intraday volatility has just been just really, really hard for me. And I think I got stopped on that move down. I can't remember um, whether it was that one or one of these, but just some these weird spikes, very difficult stock to own, um, but it's doing nothing wrong. It's, you know, brand new high. I've really just kind of got knocked out of the box uh, with that one, but that's a, um, a great area. So the industry groups, no real change. Let's jump to stocks to watch. And they, you know, I apologize, it might be stocks I've mentioned, but there really isn't a whole lot new. Acting awesome, CLR is, is if you're in that one, acting great is, you know, Devin. So these are, these are holding up just fine. CF, like I mentioned, uh, although admittedly hard to own for me, because, you know, I'm trying to have a, my stop was too tight, bottom line is, you know, in, in hindsight. Uh, this was an interesting name, Skyline Champion, which is a um, uh, home builder or, you know, uh, more in the, um, you know, smaller, maybe uh, modular homes. But uh, Chris Gessel mentioned this on uh, IBD Live on Monday. And um, I pulled it up on Monday and I was like, oh, that looks really good. I think Monday was, that I think is Friday. Two, three. So um, I actually put an order here to buy it on, on that Monday when I saw it, when I heard him mention it. I was like, oh, I like that. It had a blue dot, RS line, new high, you know, great earnings and sales, uh, EPS rating 99. I don't know if it has much. Oh my gosh, it even has sponsorship. So, anyways, I tried to buy it that day and um, I just never got filled. I think I was trying to buy just just below the 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 market. Um, I was looking for some type of because it had been up a number of days in a row. So I was looking for some kind of little pullback before it moved. Just kept going up and up and up. I was like, oh, you know, I missed this one because I think my order was in around um, seventy one or maybe something seventy two or something, and then it tried to break out and just. I didn't even realize what happened to it because I don't own it, but uh, it got torched, just giving it all back. And this is the problem with the market. It's just so treacherous. Something even that looks good, that's not really that um, tied to the, you know, the growth area. But, you know, I would imagine it's very interest rate sensitive. So, you know, just acting great up seven of eight days in a row and then in two days, if I had bought it, I'd be I'd be basically unchanged. So, and it takes eight days to go up and two days to give it all back, and and um, that that makes me a little bit nervous about the market. Uh, this one looked very good. I, I I almost bought this one, but I bought this one instead, TGH, and um, in just this, honestly, it was asleep at the wheel. Didn't know they were announcing earnings. I would have held it through earnings anyways. It wasn't a big position. Because I don't, I usually hold through earnings, um, uh, but um, gap down this morning, and I I sold it, you know, this morning uh, on the um, the fact that it was down on on earnings. I just just moved out of it. Uh, it's just it's just hard here. This market is uh, is pretty tough. Uh, Metals Rio, I might have mentioned this one before. This looks like a cup with handle to me. So I think this is the buy point. It's kind of a hard time holding that buy point because of the market. Uh, but gold had a good day today. And really this big, huge base. The relative strength is improving a tad bit. I don't know how I feel about gold. It's Gold is really tough. But I definitely watch it because I, I'm curious, like, the money's got to go somewhere. And uh, if they're worried about the markets, you know, or if they're worried about Fed rate hikes, the, the money could flow into gold. So I watch it for that uh, reason to see, um, you know, what the street is thinking. And I think today had a really big day. Like it's uh, best day in a while, 3%. I don't know. Problem with gold, in my experience, is there's never any fall through that. It follow. It just, you know, give you a day, maybe a day and a half, and then just runs out of steam. So uh, I'm wary of it. But like I said, I watch it for sentiment to see what the market thinks about 
about gold, if that makes sense. Uh, that's it for stocks to watch. I think, um, you, you know, the main thing, Tesla, or let, let's, let's review. I think we've done um, Tesla. We didn't look at Tesla, so let's look at that one. And that's an important one because it's really another great barometer for the market. But Facebook, Tesla, Google, let's, let's, let's work backwards. Google, great earnings, can't hold the gap. Uh, Amazon, biggest day ever, can't hold the move, at least not uh, all of it. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, just, just kind of a, a blase. I bet the three-month RS, for half a minute, I want you to take a moment and before, and pause and think, What's what do you think the three-month RS is on NVIDIA? And I, I don't know, I'm, I haven't looked, but um, the reason, this is a good exercise to kind of understand, you know, how stocks are, or whether they're in phase or not. I, I would guess that the three-month RS is 10. I bet it's, let's see if it's as bad as I think it is. Okay, so yeah, not as bad, 32 though. So the three-month RS is bottom third of the database. The six-month RS is still hanging in there, 84. Um, and the current RS is 94. These are selection tools, not timing tools. And uh, I think I mentioned that in the, uh, maybe two videos back. The importance of understanding what the relative strength rating is, how to use it versus you know the, the line. The relative strength line is more of a timing tool. Whereas this is more of a stock selection screening type tool. And then last but not least, Tesla. You know, I don't know. I, I'm, this is I, something about Tesla. It's, it's such a fun story and it's a great stock. And, and I really am, it's the one stock, like if I could fast forward in 10 years, and you said, Scott, you can know where you can't trade it, Scott. You can't do anything with it. <laughs> Who knows? I'd probably mess it up. But you get to know where Tesla or one stock is going to be in 10 years. For me, it would definitely be Tesla. I would really love to know, like, where does this stock, where is it in 10 years? Of course, let's say, um, you know, the, I, I found out it was at 1,000. Well, I might buy it at 860, but that doesn't mean it doesn't go to 500, then 1,000, right? Or vice versa, find out it's at 300 and I go short it, but it goes to 1,000 first before it goes to 300. So that's why I like that rule that I can't uh, uh, trade it, but I, this is the one I just really can't wait to see how this story plays out. I, I, I am so, in, so I, I see both sides. Charles had a lot of bullish um really good narrative on why he thinks Tesla can go up long-term, you know, and, you know, it's like hard to ignore that, but I also have read all the reasonings and the things that about it, that, you, that, that bother me and why, it, you know, the quality of the, of, of um, the product, I, I just don't think is on par with somebody like Apple. I just don't think they, they, the attention to detail on the cars a lot of people in my neighborhood, I have a lot of friends that have Teslas and it's just the little things that, that bother me. You know, it just feels like it was rushed anyways, but it's, this is a great barometer for the market uh, in, in high growth stocks. So you definitely want to watch Tesla. Looks a little choppy. looks a little toppy. The three month RS is 18, right? So in the short term, it's underperforming 82% of our database in the last three months. So uh, not hanging in there too well. Uh, quote of the week, real easy one, don't fight the Fed. So uh, Marty Zweig wrote Winning on Wall Street. He was a legend on Wall Street. Uh, he's, he passed a few years ago, uh, but it was one of the first books I ever read. You know, it was recommended and I'm pretty sure Bill mentioned it and how to make money in stocks or something. because. It was like the, one of the first, somebody, you know, had like 10, these are the 10 books you have to read. And I've tried reading it again. It's a little dated because uh, I think it was written in the, in the early eighties, but um, the concept is, you know, he, he was credited with the uh, quote, don't fight the fed. So uh, if, 
it's it's hard to know how to trade with this environment we're in, but it sure seems like uh, the Fed is in the business of raising rates versus uh, the accommodative policy that they've had for a long, long time. And I, I don't really like to go down that macro road too much, but um, I have to be aware of it. Uh, that's the market narrative right now. So I, I need to build that into my model. So think of Think about that, build that into your model a little bit. I think you're swimming upstream in the short term here if, if, you're, if you're trying to you know, stay the course with some names, uh, buy grow stocks on every bounce, et cetera. Uh, we'll come out of this. I, I think it's the, market, uh, the, the bear market started a long time ago, really. I know it's been uh, kind of a stealth one, but uh, the, the grow stocks and the average stock topped months ago, if not longer. So um, stay the course, do your work, and uh, let's see what uh, next, week's bring, next week brings, okay? Have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, oh, uh, contact information, reach us at marcuswith.com, 800-831-2525. Bye-bye. <laughs>